And for the second straight day, crews are doing everything they can to save the Sullivans as the decommissioned destroyer continues to take on water and is badly listing to the side at the Buffalo and Erie County Naval and Military Park. Good evening, everybody. I'm Michael Wooten in for Scott and Mary Alice. We once again have team coverage tonight on efforts to repair the damage. Both Ron Plants and Rob Hackford are live at the waterfront for us right now. Rob, first to you. Yeah, Michael, they are still working to figure out a temporary fix and have not tracked down what is causing a, sh a sheer massive amount of water to rush into the Sullivans uh, from the back rear or starboard side of the ship. As they try to track down the issue, they've had massive water pumps running pretty much 24 seven. They aren't running at the moment, however, and the Naval Parks president said the ship has hit a point of equilibrium, and that's a good thing considering how much water has been going into it. Now, the tilt of the Fletcher class destroyer has not changed much since yesterday. So if you saw our images then, not much is different today. Dive crews have been working, however, through each of the compartments underwater and trying to pump out those individual compartments to get things more empty. But the wind today has only made things tougher. Now, the irony is that hull repairs were supposed to resume Monday for a separate issue. Bidco, a marine salvage company, had completed about 20% of the work last summer. And that was what over a million dollars was fundraised for. The park president told us today, however, they spent about $300,000 of that million in covering this latest incident. We did not anticipate what is occurring in the last 48 hours. So uh, what is that going to cost? I wish I had uh, that foresight to tell you what exactly still needs to be done. I can't give you a price on that. Um, we're going to take this day by day. Um, we certainly appreciate all the uh, amazing uh, support that's coming in from not just Western New York, but all over the country and several countries uh, to make sure that this ship stays afloat. Well, Marzello says with the ship top heavy towards the starboard or right side, they will have to be careful of balancing it and may have to pull the Sullivans back to the port or left side. Now, whenever they figure out repairs for the USS, the Sullivans, there might be some thought to the future and trying to keep these ships around, including the much bigger Little Rock. My colleague Ron Plants took a look at that today, and it may be expensive. They survive war on the high seas, but Mother Nature can really hurt them especially a smaller warship like the USS the Sullivans with its three-eighths of an inch very thin hull, the ice, but more so wind-whipped waves. Think of these ships as your grandmother because they're all about to turn 80 years old, the ones that were built for World War II. Um, so folks who are up in age, their skin begins to get thin uh, and the ship's hulls over time begin to thin out, particularly at what we call the lap line where the water the water line is. You got all that movement, you got the wind splashing the waves against it. With Buffalo's destroyer, they're using an adhesive epoxy to try to seal the hull cracks and leaks, but it's definitely not a long term fix, according to experts. The kid, the Sullivan sister ship, is actually better protected in a cradle like dry dock in the Mississippi River in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, because the river there goes up and down by 40 feet. Another option, a coffer dam used around museum battleships like the North Carolina with water pumped in and out of a structure surrounding a ship, in this case much larger than the Sullivans. This one built for $8 million in 2016 by the state of North Carolina. A similar structure in Mobile, Alabama, built in the 1990s for this battle wagon at the USS Alabama Memorial Park. The executive director, a retired major general, says the Historic Naval Ships Association is already offering advice and help to Buffalo. We do have a lot of resident expertise. Uh, some are retired military, uh, some are naval, retired naval engineers. Um, uh, whether they served or not, they've got expertise uh, in handling these ships uh, on a maintenance side and uh, we'll do everything that we can. So would any of this work here in Buffalo? Coffer Dam is one of the long-term solutions that we have looked at. Um, it's a far more expensive uh, option. We are going to look at that and some other options that we are, have been talking about. Um, can it be done? Yes, all of it requires money, resources. 
Now, we checked with any government agencies about any in-water construction that may take place here, like those examples, especially right here near Lake Erie. The Coast Guard says acceptable if no environmental issues. The state DEC said they would have to review any permit. They only said that they're assisting at this point, and the Army Corps of Engineers did not respond. So it would be very complicated. Reporting live here from the Buffalo Military and Naval Park, I'm Ron Plants, Channel 2 News. Back to you.